So welcome to Advice for Grad Students, or what I wish I knew when I was a first or second year grad student. I'm your host, Phil Hahn. Uh, I'm an alum of the MIT Security Studies Program from 2010. And with me today is Rachel Teacott, a more recent alum of MIT, and who happens to be a, a cohort of mine down at the Naval War College. So as a joint disclaimer, the views expressed today are that of us and not the Department of Defense uh, or any of its services. So welcome, Rachel, to uh, Advice for Grad Students. Thanks for having me back. Sure. And today's topic is probably the most important topic of the list that we have, the job talk. So can you tell me why, of all the topics that you could have picked, you picked the job talk? Oh, because the memories are fresh, Phil. The memories are fresh. <laughs> The scars, uh, the scars have not healed yet. No, I uh, I was on the job market uh, a mere year and a half ago or so, and so um, I want to make sure to 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 provide what advice I can uh, while I still remember. Okay, well, great. So with the time we have available, let's just dig, uh, dig right in there. What advice do you give to grad students, your first or second year grad students, about the job talk? Okay, well, number one, if you make it to a job talk, congratulations. Uh, it is hard to get there, and that itself is an accomplishment and one to one to to take a moment to relish. Um, okay, step two or advice uh, piece of advice number two is tailor. And what I mean by that is you are applying for a specific job in a specific department with specific people on a committee filling up specific role. And so what that means is you have to think really carefully about, uh, about how to, how to, how to tailor your job talk in a way that uh, that will show the people in the room that you know what this institution is, knows what it's looking for, and that you are the person that will that will be able to to, to bring um, bring that value uh, more than any of the other people that they're also interviewing for the same job. So tailoring is um, is I think very important. Number three. Bring in the troops, call in the troops for the job talk. What I mean by that is this is when you really need your colleagues and your friends and your peers. Um, job talks need to be practiced a lot uh, and they should be practiced not only with the people who know your projects well, but with people who don't know your projects at all, people who were trained at different institutions, um, people who will not you know, give you the same feedback you've been hearing, but will hear it with fresh ears. Um, and so practice it a lot. This, you, there's almost uh, there's almost no cap on how much you can practice a job talk given the time that you have. The time will uh, will be your limiting factor. So what that means is workshop your talk with your friends. Workshop it through the official MIT or your institution's official job talk workshop, and also at outside institutions. One other kind of piece of advice here is you can actually record yourself giving a job talk, and you can make that recording accessible to people who can then access it on their own time and give you feedback on uh, on that oral portion of the talk before the Q&A. Um, and that's that's a really helpful way to bring people in to help you who might not be available at the moment that you happen to uh, to deliver the practice job talk. So make use of Zoom for that. Um, and I will leave it there. OK, well, you dove right in there to the actual job talk. But we're talking to grad students in their first and second year. That job talk mm -hmm. is years away. Yeah. So what are the steps that they can take now and in between to help prepare for the day to get that job talk? I think the first thing to think about is your, your entire graduate school process is preparation for your job talk. Your research for your dissertation, that research is preparation for your job talk. Your colloques are preparation for your job talk. Um, your, the rabbit holes you go down when you're trying to figure out, when you're trying to hone in on exactly what your research question is, uh, and you go through iteration after iteration, those rabbit holes will wind up being useful for your job talk. So it's not that you're just going to suddenly turn a switch and start preparing for the job talk when you get that email. Uh, you're going to be preparing for it through the whole course of your grad school career before that. Um, but then also go to practice job talks. Your colleagues, you know, your peers will be delivering their practice job talks. So go to as many as you can. And that's a very, that's a, about as good a way as it gets to starting to, uh, to, to have a sense of what you're eventually going to be aiming for. 
Okay, well, that, that is good. Did you happen, were you asked to be on any search committee? Yes, um, I have uh, I've, uh, observed job talks from the other side. It is much more fun to be on the hiring committee than to be the, uh, the job applicant. So yeah, I've seen a few job talks from that angle. Did you do that as a grad student? And did that give you any help as far as prepping? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't on a student graduate uh, search, but I was actually at the Naval War College uh, on a hiring committee with the war gaming department. And so I um, I was uh, kind of on the recipient end of, of a few uh, candidate job talks. OK, and then. Uh, so let's get into the um, along with the job talks, there's you talked about all the different applications and preparing for each job talk and specifically, which I know is very daunting. Having reviewed hundreds of applications and CVs, it's a very it's very common to, to see a blanket uh, you know advertisement uh, where it's obvious that somebody's not interested in this job. Um, can you tell do you, do you have any horror stories that you're willing to share about mistakes you made early on and how you learn from them? Yes, I have a very shameful mistake that I will share with, uh, with the group. And that shameful mistake was on a cover letter to Cornell, I directed it to Corbell, uh, Corbell in, yeah. <laughs> in Colorado, not the same school. Suffice to say, I was not given the opportunity to do a job doc for Cornell. Um, so I guess the takeaway there is um, when you're on the job market, you are going to, your head will be swimming in paperwork. There are cover, there's so much to, to there are cover letters, there's your resume, there's, there are emails you're going to be writing. You're going to have, you know, 15 different applications going. You need an outside set of eyes on, on everything that you submit. So, um, so ask that favor of people, get the second set of eyes so that you don't wind up like me uh, directing a cover letter to the wrong institution. Okay. So you give that perfect job talk and then you have almost a full day right after that event to talk to people that have just been on the job talk. So tell a little bit about your experience right after the job talk. You know, you know what I'm talking about the engagement with the faculty and all. I do, but I have to say my experience was quite strange because it was during COVID. And so all of my subsequent interactions with the faculty were COVID, it were uh, on Zoom, though they did fill up the whole day. So I did have follow on meetings with um, with with all of the faculty, uh, kind of one by one, and then a social hour uh, over Zoom with a group of about 10 faculty members where we played an icebreaker game and we, uh, we just kind of tried to have the equivalent of a pandemic social hour. Um, yeah. Okay, know. well, that, I just wanted to bring out the fact that the job talk itself is a marathon. That, yes. That, the interviews afterwards, the one-on-ones with from assistant to full professors, it takes all day. And every moment you're you're there, they're they're examining you. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're not just you're not just trying to convince everybody that your research is excellent. You're also trying to convince them that you're a good human being who they will want to have around, and that you're collaborative and congenial, and uh, just someone that they're going to want to spend you know decades working with. Uh, and so that that comes through both in your job talk, just being being kind and courteous and friendly. Um, but then, uh, then for the rest of that day, you're also on, uh, in, in even there's no off moment on a job at a job market, job talk day. You're, you're on the entire time. Yeah. So finally, uh, we're, we're about to close up here. Uh, we've talked about how tough it is, but we need to, to these first or second year grad students not to despair about the job talk. So what positive feedback would you give to them as they think about long term, that important job talk in that institution that they've been dreaming about all their life? I think what I'll also say is the job talk is for you're trying to get a job at the place, but you're also trying to meet your future colleagues in the academy more broadly and to get to know people you might not otherwise have had the opportunity to get to know. And profession and academic careers are long. And even if you don't land the job at that that university that you that you're trying for, you have had the opportunity to meet a whole bunch of faculty, and those com that that relationship can be 
it doesn't need to end at the end of the job talk day. You can follow up and build relationships with faculty. After that, uh, you can build collaborative work relationships. You can make friends and you can, you know, you, you can keep those relationships going. So that was actually an unexpected benefit of the job talk process that, I, I mean, I didn't anticipate at all. And yes, you should be focused primarily on you know doing what you got to do to get that job, but you're also meeting people that are going to be hopefully important to you down the road. That is a great piece of advice. You're absolutely correct. I still bump into people at ISA or different conferences who'd never gave me a job. And I really enjoy connecting with them again. So thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing with us today on advice for a grad student. Have a great one. Thank you. All right.